Hi, I'm Bobby Bissett, Architect for Enterprise DB Failover Manager. In this video, we'll show the installation and setup of version 2.0. In this demonstration, I have Postgres already installed and running on three nodes, one master node and two standbys. We'll start by installing Failover Manager onto the master node. Note that Java has already been installed on each of these nodes. After installation is complete, we need to make a copy of the two template files that are used to describe the Failover Manager properties and nodes that are in the Failover Manager cluster. Then I'll add the EFM script to my path to save on some typing. Now I'll repeat these steps on the two standby nodes. Now we can begin editing the properties file on one of the nodes. The first property is the failover manager license. Without a license key, you can run during a 60-day trial period. Next is the auto failover property, which is true by default. You can set this to false to turn off automatic failover and receive notifications only when an event occurs, such as a master failure. If the cluster contains more than one standby, after a master failover, the remaining standbys will be reconfigured by default to point to the new master. This can be turned off with the Auto Reconfigure property. The next set of properties describe how the agents will talk to the databases. To get the encrypted version of the password for storage in this file, we can use the EFM utility. To avoid exiting my editor session, I'll just switch to another node to run the EFM encrypt utility. You give it a cluster name, which by default is EFM, enter your password, and it will give you the text that you need to paste into your properties file. The connection count property describes how many times a database connection is reused before another one is created. The admin port is the port on which the agent will listen for local commands, such as running the EFM cluster status or EFM stop cluster commands. The next section describes how long the agent will wait before declaring a database failure. In this case, it will ping the database every 10 seconds, and after 60 seconds, try one final check before declaring that the database has failed. The next properties are used for declaring the failure of one or more nodes in the cluster. An email address is required for sending notifications when any kind of cluster event occurs. The bind address is the address that the agent will use for talking with other agents. If this agent will be a witness node, setting is witness to true tells the agent that there is no local database that it needs to monitor. The next set of properties describe your database installation. These properties describe the virtual IP address information that is used to move the virtual IP address as needed from a master node to a new master in case of a failover. For this demonstration, we will leave these blank. The next two properties describe an address and a ping command that are used by the agents to test network connectivity. The next two properties describe hooks for scripts to be run at the beginning and end of a promotion. These can be used to reconfigure something like a load balancer if you're using this setup instead of a virtual IP address. Finally, the last two properties describe logging settings. These can generally be kept at the info level. Once the property setup is complete, you can make the same changes on the other nodes, or in this case, I'm going to copy the properties files to the other two nodes, and the only property that I'll have to change is the bind address. Now we can start our first agent. In this case, I'm starting the agent on the master node. We can use the EFM cluster status command to verify that the agent is running properly. 
This is the end of the installation and setup demonstration.